Well, I started racing probably about 20 years ago. Um, and really, as soon as you start racing, unless you're really good and really lucky, you normally crash on the first day. And I did. I, uh, I was a bit wild and I'd lost my license, you know, my road license, and was at a sort of a, a loose end and my brother used to race. So he took me along to the, you know, watch him basically. And as soon as I saw it, I thought I'd better, you know, have a go at it. And it was, you know, it was great to get out there and all your aggression goes and, uh, you know, young and wild and you don't know what to do with it. You get on the track and someone will show you. We've done a, a prison bus, raced a prison bus. And um, I think that was like the first time I realised you could do maybe something more than just on the track. You could take it a little bit further and what you've learnt over 20 or so years, put that all together and you've got, you know, something that most people wouldn't, they would never get the experience to learn that. And, um, you know, some people it freaks out to have metal folding up. But in banger racing, you normally say you haven't raced until you wear a car. And that means when it's right up behind your ears and all the steels all around you, uh, then you're classed as a, a racer, like, you know, or a crasher, whichever way you want to look at it. to be able to race and drive as well as crash but in banger racing if you've not got both then uh, <clears throat> you won't go very far really you need to be able to do both I think the last count 15 steel plates and pins yeah in various parts of my body so uh, thank you to the doctors for putting me back together and um, several big crashes that maybe sane people would say that's enough and give up but uh, I've never been sane and so uh, I didn't give up. <laughs> what can I tell you about Team 47? Well I think it speaks for itself really, it's, it's just a group of guys that love to race cars and build cars and get involved in, um, in anything mechanical uh, and it's evolved over several years to also incorporate the stunt work we do. Um, a lot of knowledge and a lot of um, years of experience in a small group of people. So Team 47 is really just um, a group of like-minded people that you can draw upon their experience and their, their knowledge uh, and, and pull whatever you want off. You know, what looks impossible to other people, if you put those group of people together, we can probably do whatever you want us to do. Formula One might think they've got something we haven't and I think we think we've got something that they never have. Uh, money and stuff like that won't actually get you to where you want to be in our world. <clears throat> it's nothing to do with money, it's, it's uh, a whole way of life. Any, any other motorsport, it's not as pure as bang racing because, because of the money. 
And there's a challenge that I'd like to put out to anyone, you know, could be in Formula One or rallying. Have a go at it, have a, you know, just see what you think. Don't dismiss it like a lot of people do, because uh, it's a very pure sport. And, um, you know, don't knock it till you try it. Why are we performing to neo-Nazis, Oliver? It was supposed to be a bar mitzvah. Who's? Do you think they're firing real bullets at us? Does that answer your question? I would say I've done three stunts that I class as, as class stunts, but you know, a lot of small stuff and uh, small crashes, a couple of rollovers, things like that, that you know, are every day that we might do just for fun on a Sunday anyway. But we've done some, some big stunts now that I think speak for themselves, you know. And uh, again, going back to what I was saying, you don't, that feeling of uh, racing, also in the stunts that I do, it's like all compacted into milliseconds. So you get that buzz, but a lot more intense and a lot quicker. Yeah, it's definitely um, being alive, you know. The biggest learning curve I had off the track was um, a coach stunt we did and um, we were all very confident, uh, looked through all the possibilities of what could go wrong and confidence I think got the better of us and we did the stunt and as we, we basically hit the back of a, um, a coach went in the back window of a coat and it, what was supposed to happen is the seats were supposed to move forward as we hit them but instead of moving forward they they went underneath the car and as each seat went under the car the car was slowly going up in the air but also we're doing say 40 50 mile an hour so we're doing 40 or 50 mile an hour the car's going up and uh, a luggage rack went straight through the front windscreen um, so that was a yeah, good learning curve. Yeah, if I hadn't a duct, maybe I wouldn't be talking now. Richard's idea was that the character is going to be inside the bus looking out and the Trans Am loses control and hits the top deck of the bus. And uh, we, we had to devise a plan where we could get the takeoff hit the bus, drive through the bus and get out the other side and uh, this is what we come up with basically. We had to give it a bit of stick coming up the lane, got up to probably about 60 I suppose, took off, uh, it all went perfect as it would and we went straight through the bus, hit the other side and landed out there. hard to explain the the feeling you get but it's it's just like um, everything just rushes through you and you, it's like living a few years in a split second you know it's, it's an amazing feeling you get it from racing a bit but this is um, much more intense definitely yeah <laughs> Richard Driscoll's character in the film was um, it was a dummy set up sort of about where you're standing and um, as I came up that was at the window looking out and um, obviously it's all it's all sort of slow motion when you do it 
but the dummy's head came clean off the body and landed right in front of my face. So that was that was pretty eerie because um, although it's only a sort of split second, you just see someone's face right, you know, at 60 mile an hour pushed up against a windscreen, which was quite a strange, strange feeling, yeah. <laughs> Seven basically pulled it all together, and um, you know you you couldn't fault any of them. They gave it 100%, and it paid off. I think when you see the footage of it, you uh, you can see it was perfect, and and everyone's 100% paid off definitely. Yeah, big thank you to them all, and uh, I'm sure everyone will appreciate their work when they see the sun. Wait for the next one.